Hey everybody, this is Mike Bono from the North Andover Athletic Association, and you are listening to the Nightly News Podcast, the show that brings you inside the lines of North Andover. Hi everyone, welcome to the latest edition of the Nightly News Podcast. I'm Al Purdy. Uh, Mike Bono's away this week uh, that we're taping. I have Dave Brown here with me, and uh, we're interviewing Larry Coughlin, the North Andover High School wrestling coach. Welcome aboard. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, so tell tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Yeah, I uh, from North Andover. With, uh, me and my family moved here. I want to say '91. Um, so I uh, I would say most of my life I was here. I went to public school in North Andover. Um, started wrestling in third grade. Uh, my mom is actually from New Jersey, which uh, wrestling is a huge sport in New Jersey and in that area. So. She got me into the sport in the third grade, and um, I've been doing it ever since, and did it all through you know, middle school, high school, and a little bit in college. Went to the University of Southern Maine, wrestled there for uh, a couple of years, um, and you know, I'm fortunate enough to be, to be in North Andover because they had such a strong t- tradition, and um, we, we were able to win a state title my junior and senior year, and it was, uh, it was, a, it was a great experience. I had a lot of great teammates. Um, and a lot of friends that I made through the whole process, so it's a great, great part of my life. Great. Yeah, New Jersey, where I'm from, you have to be good at wrestling, you know, escape all the... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> good, good to hear. Um, so the one question that I have, um, you know, North Andover, like you said, has a, a long history of success. How's the team looking for this year? What are you expecting? What are you hoping for? Yeah, we, um, this is going to be my fourth year as head coach. I was a volunteer for four years before that, but uh, this is going to be the biggest team we've had, maybe five, six, seven years. So we have uh, 42 kids registered right now. Um, just for reference, two years ago I had 20. Okay. So, um, you know, not everyone stays. So I'm, I'm hoping to be in the high 30s by the end of the season. Yeah. So, but that's a pretty good, pretty good start. Okay. Um, with, with that big number though, um, I want to say more than half are brand new to the team and to the sport. Okay. So that's always a challenge, but uh, something we're not, we're not, um, it's not uncommon. Sure. And is that, is that um, like, do, do they have levels like in the other sports, the varsity, JV, that kind of thing? Um, not for wrestling. Not for wrestling. So it's one, it's one level. It, well, we do have some JV stuff, uh, but it's not as organized. There's no JV team. It's we have our varsity level, and then everybody has a chance to be on varsity and, and oftentimes gets in the varsity lineup either way. That's our goal is to get some kids varsity experience no matter what um but and especially this year because i knew i was gonna have a bigger team i I set up a lot more jv events um but generally it's just one team uh we don't make any cuts so hopefully you know um you know years ago we talked about when when the team was around 50 60 kids we're gonna have to split this practice up somehow um but we never got to that point and and hopefully someday we'll get to that point but you know we don't we don't make any cuts we don't um we don't try to turn kids away we'll take everybody (laughs) So I, I know it would take too long to get into the scoring for <clears throat> individual matches. How does the scoring work for a team, though? Like, how does it work for, how do you know who won the meet when there's a quad meet or a tri meet especially? Sure, yeah. Um, so when we have a dual meet against, um, you know, let's say Andover, um, there's 14 weight classes, and every every match we go out, you know, we put a kid out there, our guy against theirs, and depending on how the match goes, they'll score points for our team or their, their team. So if they win um, a simple decision, like a close match, it's three points for the team. If they win by eight or more points, they'll get four points. If they win by 15 or more, they'll get four, uh, five points. And if they get a pin, which is the ultimate goal in wrestling, it's uh, six points for the team. So, Interesting. Yeah. What is your outlook for this year? How do you think you guys are going to do? What are you, what are you hoping to see? Uh, it's always tough. Um, you know, more kids, the better. The deeper the team you have, the better you're going to do. Um, we, we were... We were pretty optimistic last year that we could ch- contend for a sectional title, and we were we were close. We didn't finish where we wanted to, but um, I think this year that's still the same goal. Uh, we're not in a position yet to be challenging for state titles and New England titles yet, but um, I think we're going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know, when I started a couple of years ago, we we had uh, there's there's 14 weight classes. We had 10 okay. of the weight classes covered. So then last year was the first year that we had all the weight classes covered, and it made a huge difference, obviously, because now we're not forfeiting weight classes right um and so this year with 42 kids on the team i expect you know us to never forfeit anything great and it's a it's it's a big help so how how do you stack up against the the competing towns are most of them full uh or are they all kind of spar does it vary um well as you know mvc is probably the the best league for 
most sports in Absolutely. the state. And same for wrestling. It's one of the best in the state, and potentially New England. So um, it's tough to compare ourselves to some of those teams. Now, we've we've done very well in the past. Right now, we're kind of in the middle somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're, we're growing. We're getting better. But, you know, some of these powerhouses like Methuen, Central Catholic, and... Um, you know, they're just Chelmsford, they're Lowell, they're all they have great histories and it's 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 where we wanna be, it's where we wanna compete, but um we're 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 still we're still Getting developing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So magic one question, I guess. What do you need to get to that level? Is it a, is it a I don't know, like other other teams do summer camps, you know, I know soccer and field hockey, they do a summer camp to get the sixth, seventh, eighth graders kind of more talent you know, develop their skills and get them more interested. What 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 would help wrestling? Uh, well, we're, we're off to the right start right now with getting this many kids out. Um, you know, I've said for forever that I could be the best coach in the league, which I'm, I'm probably one of the worst. If you, if you go by, you know, accomplishments and accolades and, and athletic, you know, accomplishments, I'm probably near the bottom of coaching coaches in the league. So, but I could be the best coach, but if I only have seven kids, I'm going to lose every time to a coach who's got right. a full roster with 40, 50 kids on their team. So getting more kids out. Um, and making them enjoy the sport and love it early on. Um, it's If you have a kid that you start too soon and you push too hard, just like any sport, they're going to be burnt out and they're not going to want to do it by the time they're in high school. So, you know, it's getting more kids. And then, you know, the youth youth program from COVID took a huge hit. Yep. And this year they're up to, I think, 60-something kids already. Nice. Where a couple of years ago they had 15. So, oh, you know, what did they do? Fourth grade was it fourth grade and up, or did they go straight? To uh, grade they go school? through first grade, I think. Okay. They have they start. They have like a separate thing, and then I think they do four they, through. They do. I know this from Booster Club. Sure. Yeah. I'm a Booster Club vice president. Yeah, first grade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, program for the little kids. And you know, that's it's great for that age. But you know, they, they I think they do it the right way. They they don't they don't compete a lot. They just kind of learn the sport. Uh-huh. They kind of have fun with it. Sure. Um, you want to make it fun for them at that age. There's yeah. no sense. I don't care if you're a national champ in first grade. If you quit by the time you're in middle school, you know, it's, it's not, you got to make it fun for them. That's a problem across all youth sports, yeah. it, overdoing it. Mm-hmm. And we talked about that. Uh, in, any, was, in a couple yeah, of the podcasts, you know, it always podcasts. comes up. Yeah. yeah. It definitely comes up. By the way, there's considerable, considerable evidence out there that the best players slash athletes are not always the best coaches. They, they're different, <laughs> different skill sets. So sure, I wouldn't, sure. I wouldn't, I would say you're probably just fine. <laughs> What uh, who are you? Um, who are your captains? Maybe you know who are you expect any returning um, NBC All Stars or anything like that? Who are you going to lean on this year? Uh, our captains are um, Brendan Garcia, Caleb Broton, and Colby Carbone, um, all seniors, and they've been they've been it's their work ethic and 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 their likability. You know, like the you know I, I think those kids that that were they were voted captains and and they clearly deserved it um those type of kids are why the team is growing you know sure um, if, you, if you have you know a bunch of troublemakers on the team like that are you know jerks you know kids don't sure. want to join the team so having great kids like that um that kids can look up to at any age is important um and so those guys are our first line of defense <laughs> for you know get some of these these tougher teams um and then we got some other underclassmen um that were uh, also made it to states um kyle roten is a junior and um, Josh Lister, both made it to states last year. Um, but we have we have kids everywhere who, um, you know, some seniors who last year was their first year, and they actually did a lot of work this season, this off season training. And uh, I'm excited to see everybody that um, is coming back. And and you know we got 25 new kids. I'm excited to see some of these freshmen and and what they might turn into. You never know what kids going to turn into. Right. So I'm just I'm excited. Okay. Well, it's great. So, so if you're if you're a ninth grader and you haven't have no experience in wrestling, but you're interested, there's a, you got a shot. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. We had last year. We had a, a, a good amount of seniors come out for the first time, and a bunch of them started. And actually, um, we had one that placed in the states last year as a first year wrestler as a senior. So, you know, it's it, uh, parents reach out to me sometimes, say, hey, "My son's never wrestled. Is it okay if he joins?" I said, "Absolutely. Like, we'll find a place for him. He'll be welcome." You know, I just. Jump on board. That's great. So, That's the way it should be. Yeah. 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 If you if you would if you could map out, you know, just for the kid who wants to wrestle and be successful in in high school, what are you looking to see uh, from them from maybe sixth grade up? Like what, how many how many hours are they doing it a week and what what are they taking off? Are they, you know, the whole summer take it off from wrestling stuff. Just work on 
you know, physical fitness? What, what do you look for from a sixth grade on up? It depends. I mean, I, I go to some clubs in the off season. I see kids who've been doing it since first grade, you know, and that's all they do. And they travel and they do national stuff. And, and if your goal is to be a national champion someday, then that's kind of what you got to do um, with any sport, really. Sure. Um, but like I said before, I just I want them to, to love it and want to get better and, okay. and be coachable. Um, you know, it's you could be a great athlete, but if you're not coachable and you're not interested in getting better, then it's you're not going to do very well in any sport. Mm-hmm. So, you know, learn to love the sport and um, just get some experience. You know, um, I think sometimes kids who've been started too young and maybe they're uncoachable they don't change and so they're they peak as a freshman because they never get any better um so you know just again love the sport Mm -hmm. and um you know some kids choose not to do off season and i just rather have you do something you know play another sport have fun lift run sure do something what percentage of your kids play other sports uh, a good amount yeah um you know it always hurts too when when they quit other sports and i feel guilty for you know i hope that coaches are mad that they are mad at me for (laughs) <laughs> taking their kids away my that's not my goal um you know i want kids to to find the sport that they really love and i understand if if you know we had some kids leave us this year they're seniors and it's like you know they they love other sports and they kind of want to focus on that for the last year and it's understandable um i know like if if he tried to take me away from wrestling when i was in high school it, it wouldn't have gone well you know so sure. um so i understand that I've got a sort of a sideways question. I've always wondered this with individual sports like wrestling or, or even track. How do you build the team element with the students so that they're not just waiting for their shot? You know what I mean? So to, because I know that in anything you do, if you have people cheering you, it's great. So how do you, how do you kind of build that, that team part of an individual sport? Uh, it's, it's tough, but it, you, know, you focus on goals for every kid and accomplishments for every kid. Um, it's just as important to us for a kid to get his first win, a varsity or JV win, uh, as it is for some kid chasing his multiple state titles. You know, so when you see a kid, I mean, it's it's it's, it's great to see when you see the whole team on the side of the match screaming and cheering because uh, a first year wrestler is about to get his first JV win. You know, and he comes off the mat, and he's so excited, and it's like, you know, did it did it help the team win that dual meet? It's like, well, no, because we weren't it, it didn't add to our score, but that kind of stuff is what adds to our culture and our, you know, program and, and, and everything that, that we're trying to accomplish. So, you know, every kid has a role to play. Um, sometimes they're great practice partners. You know, I yell at kids that, you know, you got to be a good practice partner to help your teammate get better too. So, um, you know, with something like that, it's, it's setting goals for everybody and everybody's trying to accomplish something, you know. What's the hardest weight class to, to find? Is it the, the super heavies or is it the late the lighter kids that are? Uh, usually the lighter. Yeah. Um, my first year we didn't have a heavyweight or or a, uh, the lightest weight, and so we were struggling. And you know if you don't have a good connection with some of the football kids, and sometimes you miss out on all those guys. So right now I think we're in a good space where we have everything covered. Uh, we actually have a lot of good upper weights. So um, and I think it's a struggle nationwide to fill those spots. You know sometimes. Our heaviest weight class is 285, so, um, you know, you got those big guys who play football and they just want to lift and get bigger, and, and then you have some kids who weigh 100 pounds who think they're too small to do any sport. So, um, it's, it, you know, there's a, there's a weight class for almost everybody, and that's why, you know, just, just I pull kids out of the hallways and um, I'll t- we'll take anybody. Do they go in, like, 10-pound ranges? Yeah, well, what's the range yeah. that's allowed? It's... Uh, it changes. It varies. Oh, uh, really? Uh, yeah. So in the middle is where most high school kids are. About between like one thirty and one sixty is like kind of the the peak. So that they're the weight classes are a little closer uh-huh. in that area. And then as you get higher, away from they, that, they or spread out a little bit more. Oh, so it's like the top two weight classes are like two twenty and then two eighty five, where the the two lightest are one hundred six and one thirteen. So you know, as you as so, you grow. So if you're a two sixty five kid, you'd probably have to wrestle t- at the two yes. with the two eighty five. Yep. So you couldn't go down to the two. What, no. So what's the what's the heaviest weight you could be to wrestle at the two twenty? Two thirty. Two twenty. That's it. That's yep. the, max. So the max. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the max. limit. So when you weigh right. in, you step on the scale. If you're two twenty one point one, you're you're wrestling heavyweight. Gotcha. So 
Yes, yeah, so you don't want to be that. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> you no. don't want to be 224.1. <laughs> no. um, what's something that, you know, maybe would surprise parents or people just about wrestling, about the practices, about the meets, about the culture? Like, what, what's something that, you know, if my kid showed up freshman year and wrestled three months later, I'd go, but I never thought of that or I didn't know that. Uh, well, a couple things. I mean, I, I like to say wrestling is a great foundation sport for a lot of things just like gymnastics would be um you learn a lot of skills that help you and do anything you know like balance and strength speed um you know hand fighting stance motion um it's great for football players i think um so there's a lot of kids who come in from other sports who use wrestling to get in shape for their spring sport or to get better at their other sport so um, i think it's a great foundational sport so even if you're not crazy about the sport itself you come in and it you know, you're going to get something out of it. And kids come in all the time, and their number one sport is something else. And I, my goal is to help you be a better football player or whatever mm -hmm. you know, while you're while you're on the team with us. So um, I'm not selfish saying that, nope, you need to quit those sports and stick with us. Sure. It's No, we want to help you be a better athlete. So I think wrestling is great for that. Um, and then the other thing, um, which North Andover has a pretty unique history with, is uh, girls wrestling is growing crazy right now. Um, it's probably the fastest growing sport in the country for high school, and it just, uh, it's gonna be a, a division one college sport very soon. Some big schools already have it. Um, I, think if, I think they need a few more to actually have a championship, um, but they're very close. And that's actually how I got involved with coaching was my sister was on the team in 2010, graduated 2013. And she was uh, Massachusetts's first girl state champion wow. um, in 2013. And she was a captain and that was our, the fourth state title in a row that the team had won. So she was on a good team. Um, and so that's how I got involved, was helping her out around 2010, 11. I started helping out a little bit more. And then her senior year, just being there every day. And, and that's how I fell in love with coaching, not just competing. So, um, and that's, that's our goal soon. Is to have that, a girls team? Yes. Actually have a girls team. Because so right now it's one team, right? Right. And so right now there is a separate girls state championship. And so you could join the boys, the, the team, and practice and then you could still compete in the girls tournament which is the same day as the boys all-state tournament okay. um and my goal ne well it was for this year but didn't really turn out um my goal next year is to have some kind of a girls only team um, how, how many females do you have on the team this year zero okay <laughs> so I, part of it is you know i understand they don't want to practice or compete with the sure. boys so yeah. i want to have a separate separate practice separate team separate coach you know yeah. and i'd like to i think if you, you build it they'll come yeah. so um you know, um, once they see it and once we have to have a little bit of a success, I think it'll grow very quickly. So I, we have some girls that have been on the team in the recent years, and I think they'd be great coaches and assistant coaches. And so once we have that in place, I think I think it'll take off. Are there any girls in the youth program now in the booster? Program? Yes, yeah. uh, I forget how many, but there's yeah, yeah. there's a good there's a, at least enough to have potentially a separate practice if nice. if they want. Nice. Um, so that's the goal. That's is encouraging. The, yeah. Yeah. Good. So. Um, I always want people to give uh, shout outs, assistant coaches. Any, who do you have this year? Do you have any help yet? Uh, I got a, I got a bunch of people. Okay. So, uh, Adrian Polanco has been my assistant for, for this is his fourth year now. So, and I've had guys um, who've helped for a year or two. Um, uh, Mike Wilson was a coach with me for two years. Um, I had Paul Luciano, who was my assistant coach. He helped me out last year. He's probably going to be in and out this year. Um, I have Rob Bouye, who who's been helping out in and out for the past five or six years mm -hmm. um and i have i have a bunch of old alumni who are going to be coming back fritz hayne zane melillo uh, these guys were all all state champs new england champs you know um and having guys like that in the room uh makes it easier for me because i don't have to <laughs> i don't have to get beat up by the kids anymore i can just <laughs> let them do it you know so i get a bunch of guys and i'm always looking for for more help mm -hmm. help um you know some guys can only make it once a week or you know here and there and um they just want to be involved i got um some some uh, other guys uh john pollard i think is going to help out uh matt messina is going to help out uh, both police officers in town so nice. um having good role models like that's important um how many um meets do you have in a year just well, not counting the states and playoffs like how many varsity meets will you have in the mbc or in your um we have about 17 dates this year so that turns into like i don't know 15 to 18 dual meets um our mvc schedule is pretty pretty tough as it is so those are usually wednesday nights and then i, I have a few other quads here and there and then, and then we also do tournaments which is a little bit different format um and so we kind of have a good mix this year uh, i kind of 
loaded up our schedule with some tournaments this year to kind of prepare the kids for the postseason. Um, so it's we'll we'll see. What's so, the, what's the oh, what's the what's the day job for you? <laughs> well, you know it's it's always tough trying to find uh, a job that works well with this, um, but. You know, I and, and same thing with finding assistant coaches, the same thing. Um, sure. So uh, it, it's been a struggle. And I, once I find something, I try to stay with it. But, um, you know, right now I'm helping out a small company in, and, uh, in North Reading and uh, with construction. And, and um, you know, they, it. Your understanding about your schedule? Yeah. Yeah, that's For helpful. Now. <laughs> so. That's helpful. Yeah. We were, we were talking earlier before you got here, Dave, just, you know, most coaches are teachers. You right. know, it just the schedule works. It's hard for people that work nine to fives to get a whole season where they can leave at two thirty every day. You know, yeah. so believe me, I know it's a struggle. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the freshman uh, softball coach. Yeah, and oh. sometimes it's I'm 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 flying in there at like you know three seconds uh, yep. uh, to go. You know, but sometimes I'll text to my coaches and say, "Hey, you guys there?" Because I might not be there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, my last question, uh, I guess, just what does it look like? when you get a you said you get good kids you know but you know wrestling's a competitive thing you know what what's your way of dealing with the troublemaker you, you know if there is one if you've had one i'm not saying there's one this year or last year but five years ago or ten years from now you know what's your what, what's your method what do you what do you think works in the wrestling kind of uh it's tough um you know hopefully finding out their motivations and you know do they want to be on the team uh, are they there against their will <laughs> Uh, if they want to be there, then you know why do they want to be there? You know, maybe it's it, it's 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 tough. You know, uh, I try to not kick anybody off. Um, you know, when we had a hundred kids on the team, you could kick them off uh, for anything. You know, just be like, you know, you're late to practice. See you later. Um, I think every kid deserves multiple chances. You know, as long as they're not a detriment to the rest of the team. Um, but you know, it's it's not easy. And sometimes you get through to kids, and sometimes you don't. Um, sometimes you could save them and sometimes you can't sure. um, so you try to give everyone the opportunity and because I think I think sports and wrestling in general is is um, it's more than just the wins and losses in the in the in the season it's it's kind of what they get out of it lifelong lessons so you know if I can keep a kid on the team even if he's you know can't even compete you know he's not eligible you know I, I'll keep those kids you know because sometimes they need a sport like that and a sure. team to be on right. uh, they need to know that someone's kind of got their back so you know good yeah that, uh, i already asked all mine all righty so i think we're good well uh larry coughlin thank you so much and have a great season we'll probably i'll try to get i usually try to get to one one game or match a year for every team i don't always succeed but i try yeah actually so i got i do have another question sure. I just thought of it um so for people who are interested in watching wrestling what it's a two questions it's a two-part question the first part is the logistics, like when we said, the meets are Wednesdays typically. Yes, it's so about half of them are home. Yep. Yeah, you know, so they can look at the uh, look at the uh, online. Well, Denver Public Schools dot com, yeah. and you go right to the athletics tab, mm -hmm. and then you can see the schedule. And then the second question is: so if you're a if you're a newbie to the sport as an observer, what should you be watching for? Like, how can you tell how the match is going? Is there some things you can look for? Uh, maybe the look on my face as <laughs> as it's going on. Um, look at the coach's face. Yeah. If it's a frown. Not going well. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it can be a challenging sport to learn, especially as a spectator. Um, we're going to have a, hopefully a program this year that has shows some of the, the rules and what this, the referee signals mean. But, you know, you can kind of tell um, just by the, the team's um, cheering and, you know, kind of the position that the kid's in. Is he on top or is he on bottom? Um, is it, to, to know if he's doing well. Um, and at the end, is his hand raised or not? Right. You know, um, But it takes a couple matches. You know, If you just go and sit in the stands, you'll see. You'll see kind of like, oh, okay, cool. That, that's good. Okay, that's bad. You know? so. I do have one more question actually now. Is Wrestle Olympics coming back? I'm hoping for next year. Okay. Um, I think COVID really yeah. um, put that away for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it's, it was such a great event. Yeah, so for those that don't know, um, it was a fundraising event for Best, Best Buddies. buddies. Um, and it was kind of like in the vein of the unified basketball. Um, it was, you know, typical uh, uh, athletes uh, helping the uh, other kids wrestle, the kids with special needs. And I, I got to be honest, it was one of the best the highlights of the year for me going to yeah. watch that. It was phenomenal. So hopefully you guys do get it back. 
if there's anything NAAA can do to help. Um, you know, that's what we do. We fundraise to support North Andover High School Athletics. So if there's something you guys need from us, you know, to get that back going, we'd be happy to help out. Um, sure. It was, it was truly a great event. It was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I there's more people going to see that, obviously, than, than any of our matches, and right. with good reason, because right. it's, it's such an amazing event. And I was fortunate enough to be... You know, the, the coach, uh, I think the last year we had it, mm -hmm. um, and then it, you know, obviously got shut down. Um, well, a lot of that stuff's coming back. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So hopefully, yeah. fingers crossed. I know they did another event the other night, uh, a talent show or something. Yes. That was best. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, hopefully the Wrestle Olympics comes back. And like I said, we'll be happy to help yeah. anywhere we can. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Thank you, guys. All right.